So as freshman orientations go, Representative Elon Omar had been one of the more eye-opening ones. Not that she doesn't deserve it, mind you, but it's been a rough few months. While most of the Minnesota Democrats' problems derive from a seemingly endless wellsprung of anti-Semitic in donations, however, this one is actually a bit different. Representative Elon Omar is facing a campaign finance pro for allegedly using campaign funds for very personal purposes, including paying for her divorce attorney. Representative Elon Omar, the Democrat from Minnesota, the controversial freshman House Democrat, is soon to learn that the results of a probe into her campaign spending as a state lawmaker in Minnesota, Sinclair Broadcast Group reported on Monday. Authorities in the Goober State, Sinclair reported, recently completed a probe regarding two complaints Omar is facing. The complaints were filed last year, while Elon Omar cruised to election to the House of Representatives by a Republican state lawmaker, Representative Stephen Draskowski, according to St. Clair. In referring to Elon Omar to the Minnesota Campaign Finance Board, Draskowski alleged that Elon Omar improperly spent close to $6,000 in campaign funds for personal use, including payments to her divorce attorney and for travel to Boston and Estonia. Drakowski's filing of the two complaints followed an earlier episode in which Elon Omar repaid $2,500 for honoraria she received for speeches at colleges that received state funding, a violation of ethics rules for Minnesota lawmakers. Elon Omar herself was unwilling to answer any questions about the investigation, according to St. Clair. Asides suggested that the news outlet scheduled an interview on the matter, but nothing came of the request. For his part, Draskowski said that Elon Omar is hiding behind her ethnicity, religion, and personal backstory to not answer difficult questions. Well, 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 so it turns out that Elon Omar is not the greatest new thing to ever hit the block. And you know, this, you know, this reminds me of how Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Elon Omar's butt buddy, was also facing some sort of legal problems. But unfortunately, since these two women, Elon Omar and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, are the flower girls of the Democratic Party, most likely the Democrats are going to protect Elon Omar like they had done in the past in regards to this campaign finance probe and so on and so forth. Even though they should not get involved, but most likely they will because Elon Omar is a staple of what the Democratic Party wants. The Democrats have made it very, very clear that they do not want any white people in their ranks, they do not want any Christians within their ranks, and they do not want anybody who really favors or has neutral feelings about Israel. And Elon Omar is very well known to use her ethnicity and her religion in order to escape hard questions or questions she just does not want to answer because she has fallen right into the democratic wedge issue crap. And Elon Omar is using her ethnicity and her religion almost as some sort of a weapon against the people who would want to criticize her policies and the things that she has talked about or has said. Now, I don't know what kind of penalties and punishments that might come along with messing around with campaign finance laws or something about that. I know it's pretty strict when it comes to that kind of stuff, but then again, you would have to assume that most politicians in office right now, and both Republican and Democrats, have their fair share of messing around with campaign finances for doing their own personal bidding. All you have to do is look at the case of Hillary Clinton and how she used campaign finances or it wasn't campaign finances, it was just taxpayer money to fund um, her daughter's Chelsea Clinton's wedding. Even though, as we know, nothing ever came about it, you know, Hillary Clinton was never charged or, fi or you know, punished or had some fines against her or anything like that. And I know that Elon Omar is the Democratic Party's favorite girl they favor her, they want to support her, they want to shield her from all wrongdoing, of all criticisms, and all that kind of shenanigans. So as in terms of anything legal happening to Elon Omar, I doubt it. You know, you can have your probe, you can have your investigation into it, and maybe that will further, you know, degrade her support. 
but in terms of anything actually happening to her in a legal sense, in a punishment fine kind of sense, I doubt it. Because I know that the Democratic Party is going to save her and going to cover for her no matter the costs. Even if it is a detriment to the party as a whole. Now I've talked about before that how the Democratic Party is trying to very secretly find replacements for Elon Omar for the 2020 race because I think the old style, old corporate Democrats, the neoliberals understand just how detriment she is to the party but they don't want to push her out or seem like they're trying to push her out because then all of that criticism of you know racism and Islamic phobism and whatever that crap is, that, that kind of crap is going to be blamed blamed and sent right back to them, aimed right back at them. And even though the Democratic Party deserves all of the crap that it gets, all of the people losing support for them that they get, I honestly don't believe that nothing actually substantial is going to happen to Elon Omar in terms of a legal sense because of the Democratic Party's unwillingness to hold her feet to the fire. And like I said before, the Democrats are really losing out on a lot of support. And all we have to do is look at their 2020 hopeful for candidates. You know, you have Joe Biden taking the lead with 28% last time I checked, and then Bernie Sanders was all the way behind at 17%. But that was before all of this, you know, Me Too stuff was starting to hit Joe Biden. And even if they push him through to get the 2020 nomination, because if they elect Bernie Sanders as the hopeful for 2020, the Democratic Party will be destroyed. All of the business Democrats and the entire Rust Belt is going to leave the Democratic Party. All of these states that were Democratic, you know, strongholds are now going to flip for the Republicans and become Republican strongholds. And don't think something like that cannot happen because we are in the middle of a paradigm shift right now. As you can see, the parties are starting to change and the party platforms are starting to change. I could easily see states like Michigan, like Pennsylvania, like Virginia, or even states like Illinois eventually becoming Republican strongholds because of the rhetoric and the craziness that is coming from the Democratic Party. You could essentially see a situation where the parties flip completely and the Democrats, you know, only hold very big urban areas like California and the rest of the West Coast, where the Republicans take strong in the South, the Rust Belt, and more, again, rural areas. But if the Democratic Party officially loses the Rust Belt, it is going to be even harder for them to win any sort of a midterm election and definitely a presidential election because you essentially need the Rust Belt in order to win the election. But the Democrats, especially in 2016, and I'm betting to willing to guess that in 2020, the Democrats will also lose the Rust Belt just like they did in 2016. And all of their crazy identity politics, wedge issues, anti-Semitism is not going to help them achieve anything better. And of course, not to mention their favoritism towards illegal immigrants, Syrian refugees, and foreigners against, you know, native-born Americans and neutralized legal immigrants. I'll just say Americans, really. And if the Democrats cover for Elon Omar yet again, if this probe and investigation actually goes anywhere, which I honestly hope it does, but I don't have much faith that it will, if they end up covering for her yet again, Elon Omar and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez could be the two girls that could bring the Democratic Party down to its knees while Bernie Sanders hits it from behind with a steel rod pole. And the Democrats would totally deserve it. That they would totally deserve, you know, falling down to their knees because of all this crap that they had pushed on to us Americans for years and years and years now. And of course, they deserve it for covering for someone like Elon Omar and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And they also deserve it because they favor illegal immigrants over the American citizens who had voted for them. The Democratic Party has proven itself not to be a party of America first, not to be a party of the American people, and not to be the party of what is right and what is moral. And again, Elon Omar, I think she is pretty much safe from this probe investigation stuff, and the mainstream media will not pick it up. The mainstream media will not talk about it, and if they are forced to talk about it, they will give her kid gloves, just like how they did in 2016 in terms of Hillary Clinton and her email scandal. With
where the mainstream media didn't really want to talk about it but were forced to so they gave her kid gloves and really danced around the issue with her. I could see the mainstream media doing the exact same thing for Elon Omar, 100%. So again, Elon Omar might face some type of legal problems because of her finance campaign scandals, but again, I don't think anything is going to actually come out of it. I think the Democrats are going to cover for her to no ends. But either way, you guys go ahead and let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.